Hey guys, <clears throat> so I don't normally film while I'm driving. I'm on the way home uh, from a class that I've been taking for the last, uh, uh, it's a periodic class that I attend as part of uh, a manager's in training, or in my case, it kind of helps brush up some things that, uh, that I've had in terms of leadership experience for a few decades. But in the course of the class today, one of the things that we were discussing that was very interesting to me is um, some of the changes that are going on in leadership and how managers are managing their teams. And the, the instructor had set it up as a traditional versus coaching method where uh, traditional traditional manager or traditional team leader um, essentially working for more of an authoritarian uh, role and position to uh, what what is happening now in much of business more of a coaching or a um, it, uh, it, it it was painted more as being a kinder gentler means of um, of leading the team. Now certainly I agree that uh, that a good leader is going to mentor, is going to train, is going to raise up, elevate um, upcoming talent for the purpose of helping to better whatever organization that person is with. Um, but it, it struck me in the middle of this conversation and the way this dichotomy was drawn, and I don't think it was intentional. I think it was just stating the facts of what's going on in business, the business world, uh, particularly dealing with, uh, with um, the difference in older generation and younger generation. It really struck me in the middle of this that it... The big difference has to do with a patriarchal versus a matriarchal structure and that much of the of the middle and younger ages in the workforce have been raised in a very uh, matriarchal environment and in many cases uh, fatherless homes uh, etc because among the other managers there and many of them many of them much younger than me uh, and from a broad cross section, we're we're all from from different organizations, and our our uh, various employers have enrolled us in this course uh, in order to help help work and develop us as far as leaders are concerned. So there's a broad broad cross section, and all through this class over the course of the last few months, because we meet a couple times a month. Over the course of the last few months, more than a few times, uh, some of the different managers have been bemoaning the challenge in the workforce with um, overly sensitive employees, of uh, employees that don't want to follow rules, of, uh, of difficult to manage situations. And so we have a lot of these good discussions and it's a good opportunity to encourage and help each other as far as, you know, and also learn from each other's experience as we discuss and talk through different scenarios that are going on in individual workplaces. In addition to the ongoing um, things that we have in, in our own. So uh, very interesting. But today's particular discussion, as we got into it, I realized very much that a significant number of the problems that a lot of these managers were having or are having in their respective workplaces is due to the matriarchal society and the feminized society that we have. And... All of it, just as I watched, all of a sudden, just the shift in my head as I watched, and I could tell the way the difference was was drawn up between um, a traditional manager versus a coaching manager. You could draw a line, and in the traditional column, I I, I actually did this in, in some of my notes off to the side because it, it was fascinating and at the same time explanatory of a lot of things going on around us. 
But in the traditional column, I wrote alpha, I wrote patriarchal, I wrote um, authoritarian, um, I wrote uh, um, nuclear family, some other things, all of these different pieces that kind of connect. And in the other column, uh, in terms of what was being termed a coaching manager, it, I wrote beta, I wrote matriarchal, I wrote feminism or feminized, um, broken families, overly sensitive people, um, a lot of very interesting, interesting collection where all these different pieces were coming together in my head. Uh, and then I started thinking about, you know, of course, Roman culture and the Roman Empire. Um, the collapse of the Roman Empire happened roughly 150 years after uh, women were given the right to vote and given uh, a, a um, equality of citizenship such that, uh, such that they could start affecting uh, events in the Senate or even serving in the Senate. Um, a lot of other things uh, along that those roles came together. 150 years. And we know in this country about, in this country, uh, the suffragette movement began in about the 1870s or 1880s, fueled in large part by the lack of men. 600,000 men had died during uh, the what, what is often called the, the Civil War or the war between the states, however you want to term it. Um, but the bottom line being that it, it, it created or exacerbated the shortage of men, leaving a whole lot of women without husbands who wound up as school marms and, uh, and um, fomenters of uh, women's rights and this sort of thing, and a significant number of poor single women who uh, were working in factories in deplorable situations and this sort of thing. And uh, that in conjunction with a monogamy-only culture that gave them no option, so their only option is either prostitution and poverty or, um, you know, to be a mistress on the side or what have you, instead of having the honorable fulfillment of her calling as a woman and uh, having a place in a home and a family. All of that led to ultimately what was what, what broke on the scene after World War II with a really heavy feminist movement, um, first wave and then second wave, uh, and everything else that we've had that has now exploded into or continued to devolve into the feminization we have in the West such that even men in managerial positions are expected to be kinder and gentler and not necessarily, not, not break rules or bend rules, but make sure that we take care of people in a, in a very, uh, in a much gentler approach. Now, again, the conversation was good in terms of, of coaching and helping develop talent and these sorts of things. I'm not speaking against that at all. But it was fascinating to me in the discussion how much of it had a bent towards um, an undue softness or an undue concern for the feelings of others opposed to um, being able to hold a much firmer line and direct uh, directive on how male and female roles and responsibilities are supposed to work, uh, expectations, how, uh, how a laborer, a person in a business should respond to uh, someone in authority telling them specifically, this is what I want you to do, this is not what I want you to do, what have you, and being able to handle that in a very direct manner instead of trying to be more careful. Um, and it's no reflection on necessarily the person who is teaching. Uh, that, that person has years and years and years of experience in HR before they wound up uh, or, or, or before they have taken their great wealth of knowledge and using it in uh, training managers. 
So I, I, it's not a reflection at all on any of the individuals with the class, but ultimately it was a larger indictment of our culture and the chaos, the devolvement that we've had as we've moved from patriarchal to matriarchal, which inevitably goes to chaos. Um, ultimately, it will. It inevitably goes to chaos. And for me, it was an encouragement um, as a man of Israel, as a man uh, who uh, defends and um, pushes um, patriarchy and, uh, and masculinity and uh, traditional, what we would call traditional roles or biblical roles, um, it was an encouragement that we have to, we must be intentional in developing, in working with, in, in uh, training sons, training daughters, training our families, coming together and working together in such a way that as the society, as the culture around us continues to devolve and eventually fall into chaos, it, which is a, a type of judgment that is coming, uh, there are a lot of other pieces of the judgment we're well deserving in, particularly in this nation. Um, the judgment that's coming and the fact that we have got to have our act together and be walking in righteousness and walking the way Yah designed us to walk and to function so that not only do we not reap the judgment, but we're prepared to be able to move forward. Um, one, of the, one of the thoughts that I had as I was looking at this is the devolvement that begins, um, or, or the real devolvement that begins was, was after the, the builder generation, the World War II vets who came home and built, that was still a fairly patriarchal in, um, in standard and in methodology and everything. From that, we reaped the the great boomer years. We reaped all of this wealth and prosperity. We reaped the comfort of no longer being a conquering society or a warrior class society where in this nation up to that point there was conquering, uh, you know, the West, conquering and, and you know, talking about the, the Western part of the country, conquering the frontier initially, conquering the West, you have to have men. Okay, and then conquering, uh, the, you know, we, we were involved in multiple wars, and so there was a bit of the warrior that went with that. There was some colon, not necessarily colonization, but certainly an exportation of American capitalism and American exceptionalism and this sort of thing. Um, it, it wasn't done in a good way necessarily or necessarily in a right way, but there was the goal of expansion. We've gotten to a place now where we are no longer expanding as a nation. We are very comfortable with our um, lifestyle and affluent, and so it has led to laziness, which leads to masculinity no longer having goals and reason for being, being highly masculine, which opens the door in part, along with the, uh, the, the feminism that, that has come as a result of um, excessive females in the culture or always having more females than males and having no-fault divorce, the bottom line, you wind up with a whole lot of single women and that itself also feeds into the feminization of the culture and it leads to a softness that finally ultimately leads to chaos because, um, what is it? Good times make soft men, soft men make hard times, hard times make hard men, and hard men make good times. You know, that cycle, and we've, we're in the, in the cyclical portion whereby um, the men are soft, and the end result is it leads to a, a, chaotic, a chaotic devolvement of culture and society, and um, with that comes collapse ultimately. So you, as men, as godly men, as women who seek to be under the watch care and headship of a godly man, or desire to um, 
desire to walk righteously before God the way that he designed family, male and female, to work. Keep doing it. Get after it. Get serious about it. Teach others what you are learning. Point them to places like this channel. Places like, uh, I, I see a lot of this with uh, uh, Straightway and Pastor Dow. Um, men being men, talking about masculinity, talking about godly righteousness and a godly family structure. And uh, through that, building Kol Israel. Because ultimately, if we don't do it, it's not going to be here as the safety net or it won't be here for our children. What we're doing is we're building structure. We're building tribe. We're building clans and tribes for the purpose of restoring the kingdom. And the only way to restore the kingdom is to be doing the king's work. So I, I encourage you to keep at it. I encourage you to be intentional about everything that you do. Take measured intentional steps in that direction as you teach your family, as you as you train those around, and as you prepare, as you prepare uh, to be able to stand in hard times. So for King of Kingdom, I bid you shalom.